It's spoiler in time, folks. This week on Spoiler in Time, we, like every other week, take all the hard work from Cord Killers, our other show where we figure out how to watch things and watch things. The things we're going to talk about this week are The Boys, Episode 8 of Season 2, The Finale, Lovecraft Country, Episode 9, Season 1, The Penultimate Episode, and Star Trek Lower Decks, also a finale, Episode 10 of Season 1. I'm Tom Merritt. He's Brian Brushwood. Hey man, uh, dude, I, I'm I'm excited. Let's let's dive right back in. Or I guess uh, do we want to bring on Meryl Barr as well? <laughs> I think we should because he watched Lower Decks and he's here, and it'll he'll feel really weird if we it. don't. Look, I get you know you drop one s bomb <laughs> during the live recording, then now I'm realizing he's getting it cut out. And no one's actually going to know what happened, but you know what? We're gonna roll with it. We're gonna roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's all good. It's There's all a good. little asterisk. Technically, you all heard a, a swear-free cord killers from me, but there's actually an asterisk next to it's visual effects. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk Star Trek Lower Decks. Uh, this is the final episode of season one. No small parts, and in no small part, Brian, this had the most Star Trek references of any episode of Lower Decks yet. Yeah, but but uh, what's interesting is, uh, in, in spoiler alert for for what Bryce was saying, Bryce, who did not is is not fluent in Star Trek, you mm -hmm. you said this was one of your favorite episodes. I I did think that as a standalone story that this was the most thrilling, had the most believable stakes, had the most progress, and if uh, but I also think. Uh, was hampered by its ending a bit. I don't know. How, uh, for the oh, that's star, interesting. For the Trekkerati here, uh, how do you how do you guys feel about? Uh, it? First of all, the ending was great because uh, I like the part where just before the credits, they held up a big old sign that said, "Brian was right. We're gonna watch all these characters get promoted on the ranks, and it's gonna become a bigger story than just working in the in the in the basement of of a starship." <laughs> yeah, and and. I was wait. I've been waiting to see how they're going to handle that. I'm glad you're right. Uh, but we leave with Boimler blowing off Mariner. Mariner is like, "Hey, Boimler, but what the hell? You 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 went and got promoted, and and you left me." And Boimler's like, "Don't worry about it. It's nothing important. You know, I'll get to it later." So, you know, obviously that's the tension that will begin the next season. Uh, that that will have to be re resolved, and I'm very curious how they do it. But but yeah, we are going to continue to to see these these stories grow and move. So it's going to be fun to see how they're able to keep that lower decks feel uh, while they do that. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the USS Cerritos encounters a familiar enemy and Tendi helps a struggling recruit find her footing. Uh, certainly doesn't do justice uh, in the log line to this, does it? No, this is... Oh my god, I love this show. I love this show so much. I love this episode so much. This is like I got I got so excited so many times throughout this episode. Uh also I guarantee you someone who whoever wrote this episode is a huge fan of Portal 2. Um <laughs> Because uh, there are so many references to Wheatley with that little robot. Uh, uh, what was uh, the uh, cupcake something? Um, uh, but like I didn't peanut think hamper. I could get. Yeah, peanut hamper. Peanut hamper. I didn't think I could get this excited because I the reference the, all the references like and sometimes I don't get them. I know when there's references. It's just I kind of don't care because I'm not a big Star Trek guy. But I'll be damned if I didn't like. I wasn't ready to flip tables when Riker showed up. And, you know, first thing sunscreen, red alert. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm here. Oh, I'm so for all of this. And then but also just that the bad guy keeps thinking they're all enterprises because they all come out of the same shop and all the ships kind of look the same. Like, <laughs> I love that joke of it. I love the, uh, you know, when, um, when, uh, 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 why am I forgetting our main character's name? Uh, not Boimler. Mariner? Uh, no, Mariner? Uh, no. Mariner, when Mariner pulls out all the all the contraband from the ship and all of the weapons fall out in the hallway, how much weapon? How much? How much contraband is on my ship? It doesn't matter. We're being shot at right now. Like it's oh, it's just this episode was everything, and I rewatched it like this uh, this morning, knowing I was coming on in here. It's just this is definitely my favorite Trek thing ever produced because I think it finds that perfect balance between old Trek. And the JJ Trek everyone hated, where it's like you know JJ J, like this is like what if the JJ Trek actually liked Trek? This is what this finale of Lower Decks feels like to me. 
the the uh, Pocklids, which are the enemy, uh, were the ones that kidnapped Jordy in yeah. the Next Generation, uh, and so them I I couldn't tell if it was one or both of of what you said, Meryl, where they're like, oh, all the ships kind of look the same, but also the Pocklids are dumb, and so it's like, oh, the dumb Pocklids who can't even tell which ship is which and think they're all Enterprise, but somehow have managed to become one of the most dangerous enemies uh, in the universe. I just found that fantastic. Uh, I also like that there were stakes. Uh, we we had a death uh, in the in the cast, not a, not in oh the four lower God. decks characters, but a significant yeah. character, uh, and also a character I rather liked. Yes, he was a one note joke every single time, and there probably wasn't going to be a lot of development with him. But every time he did his one note joke, it delivered, and usually it was a surprise punchline when he like when he comes in and breaks Boiler's uh, uh, violin. <laughs> uh, but yeah. uh, it in an alternate universe. Star Trek plus jokes. I can't think of a an easier setup where you could have gotten away with making everything out of rubber, doing a total reset, no matter what happens, decide that 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 there are no consequences or anything. But I 100% believe that dude is dead. He's dead mm -hmm. and gone, and and Boiler is yeah. off the ship, and it's gonna be a while till they get together. Uh, it's it's like they are choosing to walk the hard path and they didn't have to. And that's part of the reason that the storytelling is just, I'm just in love with all of it. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe there, this was an intentional Easter egg because I believe this is directed by one of the guys who worked on Rick and Morty, right? The, uh, the, well, the show is, the show is co uh, this created by a Rick and Morty, Rick and Morty alumni. Did, so Ma Mike McCann, did, Mike McMahon so. is the creator. Barry J. Kelly directed this episode. Okay. Um, the uh, but uh, there's there's a character. I know there's some kind of crossover, but I believe uh, uh, it's Dan Harmon's assistant is named uh, Steve Levy, and they definitely had a character that they went out of their way to say his last name was Levy and his first name was Steve, and, and he was just there. Like I I have to think that that was an intentional uh, cameo that they that they did, and possibly even voiced by him. I, for all I know, I don't know. Uh, you know what really sells me on the death of our guy is when the ship explodes he's smiling and that's that kind of death you give someone who's not coming back like the i'm dying in battle like i always dreamed i would because i'm a warrior and it's like oh dude hang on baby bear this is all oh, like you, here's the thing if they bring him back they will have undermined a perfect exit for that character uh, yeah, I can't. I don't. I don't believe that they'll do that. I, I will be very disappointed if he comes back in anything other than a memory or a flashback or something like that. It or maybe fine, a holodeck but, thing or something. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah, uh, he, he he's having. He had the best day of his life, right? <laughs> yeah. Like uh, yeah. you know, you wouldn't want him to go out any other way. He he, he got to do all the things. At uh, what, so at what point during the episode did you realize? Oh my god. They're just going to do a straight up badass next generation episode. Yeah. When they blow uh, up the ship. Oh, you mean at the end of the episode? No. At <laughs> oh, the oh beginning, you mean at the beginning, at the very beginning. Were they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, it definitely. Because it starts, it starts with the big reveal, right? That should have been the dominant piece. We haven't even mentioned it yet that Boimler accidentally you know, tells everyone <laughs> in the bridge oh, which that Mariner another thing is the captain's brilliant. daughter. Uh, which, yes. you know, blows their cover. And yet that ends up only being a side plot uh, within the battle because, you know, after we get a couple of scenes of everybody being nice to her, because now they know she's the captain's uh, daughter, uh, suddenly all hell breaks loose. And that, yeah, you're right. I feel like that's the point where you're like, this is a serious episode. This is serious tension. Like the the stuff with that. And my favorite thing is, you know, we he find, Boiler finds out at the end of episode nine that it's mother daughter and then they don't they don't like hold on that reveal it's you know first scene you know first act boom uh finds out and then it you know beam him up and then he's screaming and crying in front of the captain on the bridge it's like god bless them for not holding back on that uh i was so uh, you don't think I that they've so held this back the entire season 
Well, they held it, back the reveal, but they, you know, they're usually once you have Boimler find out, you would hold on that for like a couple episodes. I mean, they, they went the first three episodes. So they, they mentioned it in the first episode and then they never even referenced it in the second episode, which I really appreciated because they, it wasn't like they teased it every single episode. And then finally, after this tantric wait, we, we get the, the release. It was like kind of not a thing for the, for the bulk of this season. And then they, they sort of ramped it up last episode by, you know, reminding us that it's even a secret and that it's a big deal that Boimler even found out. And then they resolved it the very next episode. So I didn't, I didn't feel like it was held back too much. No, but that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm glad they didn't like, I'm like, they just ran with it. And it's like, they could, cause you could have milked like at least two episodes out of Boimler finds out and Boimler agrees to keep the secret. And then immediately it's nope, Boimler screwed up. And now everyone knows. <laughs> And we got uh, Badgy, uh, the return of Badgy. Badgy! <laughs> uh, this episode's we, just we, so great. Like we, men- we mentioned the Jonathan Frakes, uh, Marina Sirtis uh, appearances, uh, voicing their old characters at the USS Titan, which, honestly, this isn't even a thing, but I was like, why do they have the movie-era uniforms on still when the Cerritos folks all have these new, like, piping-oriented TNG-like uniforms? But uh, whatever. I don't even care. It was, it was super fun. Was this the one where they made the reference to the Enterprise Yes, and, uh, and they, series. And they, it, it, uh, yes, uh, they 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 were they were heavy on the. Uh, they, he mentions the Star Trek TOS, and he goes, which is what I call it, and he doesn't say the original series. He has those old scientists or something like that. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah, and then yeah. Likewise, uh, uh, they also reference the song. It's like, oh, I've been reading up on the journals of the original Enterprise. It's been a Man, long road getting from there. They to sure here. did have a hard time getting from there to here to there. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Also, we have to talk about the <laughs> fact that here. Rutherford lost his memories. Oh, oh, that's right. 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 With the more the, stakes, uh, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, and, and in classic Tendi style, she's, she does the like, oh no, do you know what this means? We get to become friends all over again. Like, <laughs> yeah. and she's like super Okie consistent. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, this no, this show is, uh, just, so good. So good. I, this might be the only show that I've seen in COVID world that I will actively seek to rewatch over the holidays when I'm looking for like a Ted real Lasso. good. <clears throat> I yeah. Know, after I, I get Ted done Lasso. with Ted Lasso, I, I will I love, rewatch lower decks. Absolutely. Yeah, I love, right I love Ted Lasso. I love Ted Lasso. I, it's one of my top shows of the year. Uh, it's, I don't rewatch almost anything. I will likely rewatch Star Trek lower decks. All right, folks, uh, that is Star Trek Lower Decks, uh, the finale, uh, no small part, uh, episode 10, season one. Uh, We're going to bid adieu to Meryl Barr, but Meryl, before you go, uh, let folks know where they can find more of what you're doing these days. You can find me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Meryl Barr, M-E-R-R-I-L-L-B-A-R-R. That's the best way to keep up to date with all my stuff. There's nothing I can talk about right now. There are things happening. I just can't talk about AM, and you'll hear about them when I can hear talk about them. There you go. All right. Thanks, Meryl. Let's talk about Lovecraft Country, episode nine of season one, Rewind 1921, uh, dominated pretty much by the crew heading back to 1921 Tulsa in an effort to get the book of names so they can use it to save D, who they temporarily got Christina to help uh, reset the spell, but it won't last. Uh, so they need to come up with a more permanent solution. Also, Tick uh, has agreed in order to get Christina to reset the spell to go back to Artem with Christina, who needs all of his blood so she can become immortal. Um, yeah. Wait, uh, what's funny is I, th- I think she said I need his blood. She did, didn't say all of but but I had that. Uh, what I assume is the same thought, which is like, can he just donate some? Is that enough? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, when, 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 he, when she's talking to Ruby, she's like, I, I'll need his blood. And and she stops and either Ruby says something and then she says all of it. But yeah, she she does come out and be like, yeah, no, he's not going to survive. I can't remember the exact words, but it becomes clear. Yeah. But they're like, and in case you're wondering. <laughs> uh, but uh, so so do you, do you remember when we just started this series? It really had an anthology feel those first few episodes and now we're in this kind of weird hybrid stuff. This one, I felt it a lot um, because it was the first 25 minutes was all connective tissue to other episodes. And, and you had to have seen the thing to understand why Ruby is able to do this. You had to have seen the thing, the previous episode for the D stuff or whatever. And then 
the last 30 minutes are a total, I don't know, kind of like a remembrance, like let's, uh, let's go into uh, the dad's memories of, of, of that, of that time. And then it was totally kind of in a bottle and, and yeah, they got the MacGuffin and then got out. I don't know. This, this one just felt, um, uh, I, 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 I felt this disconnect between the, the two halves of it. I don't know if I would call it pacing or something else, but there is, there is a problem with this series uh, in getting you to have momentum as a viewer. Uh, it, you can work through it. If you like enough of the characters and the storylines, you can work through it because it's all there and it's all good and it's all connected. But because sometimes it's an entire episode in, in another dimension uh, or an entire episode in a flashback in Korea, uh, you you never seem to get enough rolling for, for me. And my wife and I talked about this. We both feel the same way on it. Uh, you just you'd never feel like like I'm in the story and I'm I know what the mysteries are and I'm ready to find them. Not that you don't know what the mysteries are. It's just you keep getting distracted by like, oh, well, now we're going to look at this. Now we're going to look at Ruby's story. And yeah, I think they might have been better served to go, either go all anthology or like I said previously, uh, follow more of the book's structure and say like, we'll do three or four episodes on this story. Story. Then we'll just stop and we'll do three or four episodes on this story and it'll interconnect, but they will be self-contained uh, because it, it really does feel like it, it stops and starts a little bit. And like sometimes it's a straight ahead narrative and sometimes it's anthology. You, you know, what it reminds me of is, and, and I think that that's sort of the same thing that makes it great is also the same thing that might make it difficult on some episodes is it's a bit like reading an anthology of short science fiction stories in that yeah. some will be your jam and some will not be your jam. And sure, you know, sure. And, and it's like that pivot from last week being a straight up, uh, you know, one of the threads being a straight up awesome, terror, terrible, you know, monster is going to get you a horror movie. And then, and then, and then this, you know, a time traveling remembrance of, of, of a terrible riot. I mean, it's, 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 it, 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 I, I like, I like your phrasing of momentum. It's hard to feel like we're buckled in and we're in the groove when at any moment we're taken out of it. And I really felt that this episode was like, okay, so are we in the groove or are we pausing to go hit the reset button where all of a sudden everything's in a bottle halfway through an episode that it's, it's just a little fits and starts for me. That that said, uh, I enjoyed the first half of the episode well enough. Uh, I felt like, okay, we're making progress. We, Christina's revealing more of her plan. Uh, things are coming into place. They have a plan to get the name, book of names. I really liked the second half. Uh, I, I got swept up and no longer was thinking about where are we and why do they need this anymore? It was like, okay, we're in Tulsa and they need the book of names. Great. Simple. Well, let's let's get to it. And I, and and I got swept away by that more than I usually do uh, in this. And that's a testament to the fact that they have built up really good characters that you understand and sympathize with and are complex. Uh, and I thought they did a great job of you know subverting not only ticks but I think the viewers' expectations of his father uh, Montrose within the story that he's telling. Uh, where where you know. You, th I thought that the things Montrose was hearing was him remembering punishing Tick, and then it turns out that it's not. He's remembering his own father punishing him, which explains how he treated Tick. Uh, and then there's the well, did you and your, uh, did you and your mother, you know, who was my real father? Well, biologically, George was your real father, and that's a big revelation. But also, I was your father for this reason. I, I loved all of that. I thought that was all great. Uh, that's interesting because I keyed in to the moment they time travel and they did make a moment. They sort I was like, okay, what rules are we playing under? Because there's various interpretations of sure. what, what, what the, the rules of the games are, you know, and uh, they eliminate the many worlds one. So the infinity war uh, type stuff where it's just like, yep. Hey, do whatever you want. There'll be no repercussions. They're like, no, no, no. You have to, to have everything be fine but the question is is this more back to the future or frequency rules where you can change things but they could be for the better uh or or uh, uh, instead it does one of my favorite sets of rules which is it is impossible like do whatever you want in the past because it is impossible for you to mess anything up because it's yeah. already happened and right. uh, uh so so there's sort of that moment where it's like, okay, so that's what you went with, uh, which makes me think of there was some young adult book I read when I was uh, in eighth grade where uh, I, I've never seen it again, 
but somebody time traveled and the advice she was given, like, can I change the past? They're like, yeah, you can, but you won't want to. And so like in the past, she picks up a vase and she goes, I could smash this right now. And she's like, but it's a nice vase. And then she sets it back. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, but, but anyway, I, I was more keyed into like, what rules are we playing by? Sure. Sure. I, and I did love that they went with my preferred but harder to tell a story within rule, which is like, no, all of time is fixed. We only perceive it as moving because we're humans. And no, you can't go back and change things because th that's just how it happened. Uh, and and yet you'll feel like you have free will still. And so that moment when he's like, so, but your stranger isn't coming and he kicks the bat and realizes like, oh, shit, I'm the stranger. Yeah. This is great. Like, I love that. I was cheering at that point. Uh, also, man, that is a brutal beatdown. And I I respected the fact that, like, the fourth head he smashes in, or or actually, I think he just hits her in the back, is is a, is, is a girl. And uh, uh, that's that's not... Uh, uh, n that that was an intentional decision. Of course, they they didn't kill her. You see her very safely. She was, she's yeah, like the cobra. you very clearly see her scamper away. Right, she's later. like the, yeah. the cobra who always parachutes out of... <laughs> Uh, out of the uh, G.I. Joe exploded airplane. Right, right, yeah. Uh, uh, but here's what I'm hoping for next week. I hope that the, th the things that did make this work were the payoffs of like, oh, because we know this about D, because we know this about Tisha, because we, or, or Letty, uh, because we know this about Tick, uh, these moments were deeper and they paid off. I'm hoping next week is just one big explosion of payoffs where they're like, yes, we know we, we did anthology stuff and we, we, we left a bunch of threads, but the Korean girlfriend's going to come in and the, you know, we already saw the dimension play into it with the time travel, but maybe there'll be something else from that. Like, I, I just want to see all the threads come back to, together in some masterful storytelling. That's that would, that would tie it up really nicely for me. I, I think about the, uh, the museum uh, thread that they left open when we, when we yeah. talked about that episode where, they go down the one path and uh, Tick is saying, well, it looks like someone went down another path. I mean, that's clearly now that t now that time travels in play, that's them, right? That's going to be, yeah, them it could be for some reason going down that other path. And uh, also the lady that got away, she escaped. Where'd she go? Is she going to come back into the story? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Uh, so that's Lovecraft Country, episode nine of season one. Let's talk about the finale of The Boys, season two, episode eight, What I Know. Um, we, uh, we, we saw a battle. We saw a fi finally saw like a major superhero battle. I, I know I'm jumping like right towards the end, but uh, we, we got a uh, battle between Starlight, Maeve, and Stormfront. Uh, yeah, dude, a brutal beatdown. That scene where it's just three on one Stormfront in there, just getting, just getting, they're just kicking the crap out of her. That was amazing. I, I went back and sort of just uh, refreshed my memory, uh, kind of just scrolling through and catching all the set pieces or whatever. I was on on that scroll through. I was really taken by how much happened in this episode. When the episode begins, nobody knows that Stormfront is a Nazi. And so we see her uh, her political downfall, her social downfall. We see Homelander. Uh, Homelander just is getting around to trying to be a dad to his son and doesn't realize, you know, and 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 takes him into overstimulating environments or, or whatever. Uh, we just find out that the deep is, uh, or that the A train is going to be accepted back, and then, but not the deep. And then yeah. we see the reverse of that, or, or actually, yeah, sorry, uh, 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 we find out that the deep is coming back and not a train. Then we find out that it's a train and not the deep, but, uh, man, it's, it's a big episode. A lot happens in there. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, the, the heartbreaking moment, which is very boys, uh, is when the son finally feels his power and uses it to defend his mother, but because of circumstances beyond his control ends up killing his mother. And I, I, I think you're, it's left vague on purpose. Like did Stormfront slash her throat on purpose accidentally as he was burning her? Uh, doesn't matter. He's going to feel guilty about killing her and Homelander is going to hate him for killing Stormfront. Although I'm not sure it's at the same level. Yeah. Although uh, I, I, I believe we're led 
with the impression. Oh, yeah. I said killing Stormfront, but she's still alive in an undisclosed location, right? Oh, is she? Yeah, Homelander says yeah. that in the speech at the end. Oh, uh, I figured that was just a lie. Uh, it could be. I don't know why you'd bother. Um, yeah, saying. the creators were out there talking, and she's still in play. Yeah, yeah, and she never, she never stopped muttering German, so we never saw her die. Uh, that's a good point, actually. Apropos of nothing, that uh, that scene, that scene where um, Homelander is is administering self love on the top of a building. Uh, read an article saying that apparently that scene was originally written for season one and Amazon was like, this seems gratuitous. Are you sure we need this? How about we cut it? And uh, apparently they shot it. So it's unknown whether or not that's just straight up footage from season one that got placed in there or or if they reshot it. But uh, mm. but that uh, if man, they reshot it, so to speak. OK, <laughs> uh, Justin was talking about how uh, A Anthony Starr, is that his name? What uh, Homelander's name? Yes. Oh, Anthony Starr is the actor's name. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Uh, definitely, I agree with Justin's sentiment that he deserves an Emmy. I mean, his ability <laughs> to portray that level of insecurity and also square-jawed, all-American baseball and apple pie values is uh, extraordinary. It really is. Uh, and and uh, unthreatenable power, right? Insecurity and uh, unassailable power in the same package with evil and uh american sensibilities it, it it really is good um uh, we i i think the only thing i'm sad about is that this really just set up a great season three arc uh where we're we're going to have to see where we go will stormfront grow back her limbs uh with her superpowers because she she is she can regenerate uh will Will, will she be able to rejoin the seven given the political fallout? And if so, how do they manage that? Uh, and, and now that starlight has effectively outed herself and Maeve outed herself as, as anti uh, stormfront who assaulted stormfront, are they going to, how long is that facade going to be kept up? Uh, we see the facade propped up at the end that uh, this, this, like you said, had a lot of stuff happen. And it really left me, uh, excited to see how it plays out. You, uh, it's interesting. I, I, I'm really dialed in on the, the terrible price or, or the terrible outcome for, for butcher in that he gets the kid, the kid who right. he resents because he's uh, number one, a soup number two, the offspring of, of Homelander raping his wife and loses his wife. And so that's going to be a very difficult relationship, especially since they've, they went out of their way with a, a kind of weird um, appendix of a scene with his dad. I still, I don't think that really paid off in this season. Maybe that goes somewhere next season, but obviously he had a terrible upbringing and has father issues. And, and now he's somebody who actively hates what this kid represents, possibly hates the kid himself <laughs> for, for, for <laughs> maybe either directly or indirectly killing his wife. And I, it's, uh, I don't know, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing that part. And uh, I'm also happy to see Frenchie and, um, I forget her name. Kimiko. Uh, Kimiko, uh, 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 being friendly again. That, 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 that warmed me up a bit. Yeah, uh, America's sweethearts, Frenchie and Kamiko. <laughs> Neither one of them are American. Uh, yeah, I, I I love that. I love that relationship uh, as well. I, Is this I also the really episode good. where we see Mother's Milk going home? I guess that was somewhere yeah. in there. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we do. Um, and uh, he's not going to stay home. You know no. that. We know that. We all <laughs> he's, know that. Too, he's too awesome to stay. Sorry, home. man. Uh, you're coming back on the team with Billy Butcher. Uh, yeah, man, that uh, I'm glad you you reminded me of the Billy Butcher thread because that's a, there's another thread where it's like he's stuck raising a son he didn't want around. That's the whole reason that Becca didn't go with him. He's he's paying the full price knew, and like, getting none of the buffet. Yeah, yeah, and 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 came right up to the moment of betrayal where he would hand him over and then stepped back. Uh, yeah. Good so uh, uh, two two little things uh, seem fairly toothless. The implication that Huey's just going to go into a life of politics now. I mean, he's, he's going to be back. He's going to be back with the boys in about five seconds. Of course, of course. I I, I felt like that was I, that, that was consistent with Huey. I could see Huey like, man, now that this is all over, I want to make a difference, and I'll join AFOC's campaign to to do that. Uh, and 
uh, now that we also know that she is the villain who popped all the heads, he doesn't realize that he is going into the belly of the beast, that she's a soup. And she has the political position because she is that right that she's the czar, right? The soup, she, uh, 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 what is it? Agency, a, a task force or whatever. Yeah, yeah. like uh, she's uh, in fact the the opening of this episode is she's the one talking to the guy who's overwhelmed and like like what's it gonna take? Uh, we got to do something. We got to keep him in check or whatever. And he's just like, uh, yeah, screw this. I hate politics. I hope I get fired. Oh right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. Any other thoughts on the boys? Packed uh, episode. It's a great show. I hate that I'm gonna have to wait so long for the next se season. I kind of agree. Starlight, Starlight seemed very weak in that battle. I will just say, in I, against against Stormfront. I mean, I think that was all because they've shown Starlight so strong before. I think that that we're supposed to assume that Starlight is just as strong as Starlight has ever been. It's just that Stormfront is that much stronger. Uh, so, so yeah. I mean, that that played for me. I thought. Yeah, because she gets some, some good licks, but Stormfront has been built up as like the ultimate superhero, right? Which is why she and Homelander pair off, because he is also the ultimate superhero as well. A gambling man points out in the chat, uh, yes, they very gratuitously took five <laughs> minutes to explain why there's so much Billy Joel this season. And I didn't care for that scene. They didn't need it. As far as I'm concerned, like he likes Billy I Joel. I loved that scene, and I've had only the good Die Young stuck in my head ever since, so it's fine. <laughs> All right. Next week on Spoiler in Time, uh, we've got a, had a couple of finales today. So we got a new schedule coming up. Uh, we will, of course, do the finale of Lovecraft Country, uh, but we're going to catch up with Fargo. So uh, if you haven't been watching it and you'd like to join in episodes one through four of the current season of Fargo, uh, the one with Chris Rock, uh, check that out. We'll be talking about episodes one through four of Fargo, uh, and we'll be, uh, heading back to the Larry Sanders show, uh, in season six. Uh, we'll be talking about Larry Sanders show episodes five and six. We love your support. Thank you, uh, for stepping up. We know it's hard for a lot of folks out there, but we got you guys stepping up and being willing to support us and make the show, uh, still happen at patreon.com slash cord killers. Thank you for that. And we will spoil you again next week. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>